Hey guys, Lemon here. Just been playing Oxygen Not Included and thought I'd share my fully self sustainable base with you guys. So I'll just give you guys a walkthrough of what's happening here. So I'm on cycle 203. Um, I spent the last 50 cycles pretty much just making things look a bit nicer and neater. So on the top left hand corner here, we've got uh, the power and fertilizer machines. So luckily, there's a natural gas geyser here which produces just natural gas where I've got the generators here to produce power so if you have a look on those green bars there they're fully loaded with um, gas so if I switch to the power view here so I've got some thick wires running down here and that supplies all the rest of the base of energy I've got transformers like that there um, just so these circuits don't over uh, go over capacity same with here uh, to be honest I probably didn't even need these because I could just branch out the mini wires off the heavy wires um, anyway I'll continue here so I've got fertilizer makers here as well so they use polluted water to make fertilizer and they also emit natural gas uh, to supplement the gas that's coming out of this geyser for these generators now you I had one gas filter and one pump that's all you really need so Go into gas view, the fil the gas pump pumps it into the filter, the filter pushes all the uh, natural gas into the generators. Anything else gets pushed out with the um, carbon dioxide all the way down here. So on the bottom here I've got a air scrubber which cleans up all that carbon dioxide. Now the trick to getting a self-sustaining base is you need, you need geysers, so that's for energy. Now water is also a finite resource, but with a steam geyser you can get essentially unlimited water. The only downside is the water is very hot as it comes out of the geyser. What I did is create a large uh, water vat down here. So if you have a look, normally what I do, I just change these tiles to mesh tiles so the water can run through. Um, so that runs through, leaks down here hits that thing, so that's a gas permeable tile, so gas can run through it but not water. So it goes down here and into the vat. Now normally I seal it up after I reach maybe four or five tiles of water and that lasts for, I've tested it for just about 24 hours, so what I could really do, because the only water output I have is a liquid pump, uh, if I created a valve here to push out as much water as this pump actually uses then I wouldn't have to open and close this tile. Now in terms of food, um, in the previous version you'd have to rely on dirt and water to make mush bars with micro mushy recipes but with the new update you can actually farm food unlimitedly. So if you have a look as long as your yield is above 80, the after harvesting it will produce seeds. So if you have a look here, I've got 152 seeds and in order to have these in ideal temperatures you need to fertilize them. So I've got unlimited fertilizer here because of these generators. Uh, you need polluted water which I've got through people taking showers down here, toilets down here and the air scrubber over here. Also, if, I, if I'm ever using the slime converter into algae, that produces polluted water as well. Um, the generators over here also produce polluted water. So that, if you have a look here, see there's mesh towels. So that water leaks through, leaks through and gathers into here where I've got a pump. And that pump pushes all that polluted water through. So the way you, you manage your uh, pipes is quite important. So if you imagine I've the directional flow of things, I've got this direction coming down, I've got the air scrubber polluted water coming up, they meet at this T section and get pushed through this way. If they get pu pushed through this way, as, as it moves along, if anyone uses a bathroom like this guy for example, it goes up and joins the flow, so it's, it's one directional. Now the way I've got it, I've got it flowing up here and it does flow left as well because you do need polluted water to um, water these hydroponic farms 
Now hydroponic farms, they so in term like uh, I did mention they need fertilizer, so they need polluted water, also need air pressure and the right temperature. So mealwood grows from 10 to 30 degrees. So if I look at our temperature here, we've got 27-ish is the average. Uh, so that falls within the ideal range. Over here, up here, it is a bit higher than ideal. Well, actually, it's just on the upper limit. So what if if I really wanted to, what I could do is uproot one of my wheeze watts, like that, 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 or down here. I've got them placed randomly at the moment, but I could put them up here just to control the temperature if need be and that's particularly a problem if you're using this geyser water because what happens is see how this side is all red I've stopped that flow but it would normally be oh, about 60 and it, it gradually declines and the only reason why it's declined because I've built next to the ice biome so going back to temperature I put my batteries and the manual generators and generally any heat producing things around the ice biome or where possible even in the ice biome so that's going to control the temperature leaving the middle part of my base yeah, quite, quite a nice average so the left is a bit cold the right is a bit hot there's nothing there the middle part is where you want to be now in terms of stress decor I've got um, pretty pretty good greenery everywhere so where they need to be so where they sleep where they eat uh, where they make food if they need to use that musha. I've actually got nothing queued there, uh, only because I've found with 18 of these farm hydroponic farms, it's enough to feed my seven uh, people without any extra food. So whatever grows is pretty much just like a little bit more than what I need. So a bit of it does decay. So I actually don't need to do anything right now and they will feed themselves, they will do everything they need to do. Um, just something to keep note of as well. So natural gas is heavier than oxygen, uh, but because there's no oxygen production here, some of the gas does flow out as this door opens. So I've got a mechanized airlock, so the door opens faster than a manual airlock, but inevitably some of the natural gas does flow out. So what I've done, I've created a vacuum room here with another lock. I've got a pump here to pump with a filter to pump any natural gas that may have flown out, pump it back into here. So the rest, anything that's not natural gas, gets pushed through here, and that's usually just oxygen. So if you have a look, oxygen is pushed through here. Any natural gas goes through here and back into this uh, gas chamber there. <coughs> so I think that is about it. If you have any questions, just leave me a comment and I'll be happy to answer. Thanks for watching.